I'm Katie Martin. And I'm Chris Hicks, and we're Extension Agents with the University of Tennessee. Every day, Extension Agents in 95 counties across the state help ensure Tennesseans have better farms, homes, and communities. We're traveling the Upper Cumberland to introduce you to the farmers, families, and Extension Agents who are cultivating communities. Hey everybody, we're excited to be here in Van Buren County today. And Chris, you know a little bit about Van Buren County, don't you? I worked for the Extension Office for six and a half years, but when I was here, it was back in the Burrett College building. Apparently they've moved offices, so let's go inside the new Ag Learning Center and see if we can find Chris Binkley, see if he'll give us a tour around the county. Sounds good, let's go. Hello, welcome to Van Buren County. We're inside the Van Buren County Ag Learning Center here in Spencer, Tennessee. My name is Chris Binkley. I am our Agricultural and 4-H Extension Agent here in Van Buren County. My primary roles are adult agriculture and also 4-H. Uh, agriculture is a big industry in Van Buren County and we are kind of a trendsetter here for the f one of the few places in America where the actual number of farms increase from one census to the other is here in Van Buren County. From the 2012 census to the 2017 census we actually increased about 35 farms. Van Buren County's ag industry is about an $8.2 million industry, which to some people that might not be a lot, but for a county of about 5,300 people, that lets you know that ag is very important. That number does not include our timber industry, which makes up our largest section of ag. Of that $8.2 million, beef cattle is our biggest of that part. We have about a little over $5 million in livestock sales annually, according to the census data. And also, uh, the other part of that is crops, which makes up almost two and a half million of that, with the majority of that being the vegetables. So our three biggest crops here in Van Buren County are timber, beef cattle, and vegetables. The University of Tennessee Extension here in Van Buren County offers a wide variety of agricultural programs. Uh, by far our biggest program is our Master Beef program. Uh, we, along with White County, are members of the White Van Buren County Cattlemen's Association started back in the early 90s and we have about 200 members in that association, which for the two counties is pretty, pretty good. Uh, we offer beef and forage programming once a month. We either have the meetings here in Spencer at our Van Buren County Ag Learning Center or we offer it at Sparta most of the time at the fairgrounds in Sparta. And the topics range from whatever timely topic is going on at that time in the beef and forage industry. We also do lots of programming on vegetable production. We have a large vegetable operations a farming community in the south end of our county. Uh, every year we'll offer two or three vegetable producer uh, meetings focusing on diseases and production. We also do a lot of pesticide classes to ensure that they're using the pesticides correctly. Out on the south end of our county near Fall Creek Falls State Park is a large vegetable growing community. These vegetable growers take a lot of pride in their product that they produce. They have all been through the FISMA training, which makes them uh, certified. They are producer certified. They also every year have their water tested to ensure that the water that they're using on their vegetables and to clean their vegetables is in compliance with the federal regulations. They uh, start all of their products or produce in a greenhouse 
They grow it first in the greenhouse up until it's so big and then they move it outside to kind of hardy it up. Then once it's moved outside, they uh, plant on top of plastic to help with the weed control. They use drip irrigation to ensure that the, uh, keep the diseases down. They also use good varieties for that. From the uh, drip irrigation, they also put in their uh, fertilizers to ensure that the plants are getting the proper nutrition. From that, they harvest. The methods that they harvest, like I said, are all producer certified with the FISMA program. From there, they go into a, a packing house in which all of the vegetables are washed and packaged according to coming from Spencer, but it's all farm. Uh, Van Buren County's vegetable producers are number one in the state in the number of farms that sell directly to retail uh, institution, food institution, or food hubs, which we're very proud of. If you would like to buy some of their products, they've got two produce stands that are open seasonally. One is on the Brockdale Road, Brockdale Produce, and one is on the corner of Highway One, Old Highway 111 and the Army Camp Road, and it is just called the Market. So stop by Van Buren County and pick you up some vegetables. All right, we're fixing to head over to uh, A&H Slaughterhouse here in Spencer, Tennessee. As was mentioned before, the beef and forage industry is huge in Van Buren County. We have over 9,000 acres in Van Buren County of forage production. A&H Slaughter is going to be a new slaughterhouse that's going to be opened here in Van Buren County. It's going to be a custom slaughterhouse. It is run by Barry Austin and Jeremy Howard. So let's head on over there. Hey everyone, we're excited to be here in Van Buren County at A&H Custom Slaughtering. We're here with the president, Barry, and he's going to tell us a little bit about himself and the business. Um, well, I started, started this about a year ago. Um, there was a big need in Van Buren County. Um, there's about a two year backlog in our local economy here on custom uh, processing. I met with my local agriculture extension agent, Chris Binkley from Van Buren County, and he just so happened to have a feasibility study done by the University of Tennessee, and I kind of started with that book, doing a little research to see if it was financially uh, able to do it in Van Buren County, and everything looked good, so we started the process, and so far it's went very well. Awesome, very good. So do you want to tell us a little bit about how you got involved in production agriculture? I know you're a beef farmer as well, so could you talk about that? Um, I started, I was born and raised in Van Buren County. I joined the military for about 22 years. Um, 12 years ago, I went into raising Angus beef and I've been selling about 40 a year off the um, to custom to custom people selling right to individual farm to table I believe they call it today and uh, it was going really good but there was a large backlog um, about two years and it was really I was having trouble getting my meat into a slaughter facility so that's one of the reasons that I decided to do it that makes sense so one of the challenges as a farmer seems like it's been processing but do you want to tell us a little bit about some of the challenges or difficulties you guys have faced as you've been trying to get this business up and going Okay, first I'd like to say our, our county, Van Buren County, has been very helpful. Um, everything from water to electricity. Uh, this site had three-phase power, so that's worked out really well. Um, some of the disadvantages would be COVID. Um, that's, I think that's really hurt us a little bit because of just ordering things. A lot of just simple things like uh, refrigeration systems and stuff, they've been a large backlog, about three months of a backlog on that. And also um, hanging weight scale, there's about a three month backlog on buying those. So we had to do quite a bit of research to get that stuff ordered early to uh, make sure it's here. Uh, for the building. That makes sense. COVID has come with, I think, a lot of challenges, but maybe some advantages as well. Have you seen um, the pandemic and maybe the meat shortage affect your business uh, and its outlook long range? Uh, I think it has. I think um, COVID has brought a lot of people, uh, when we had a meat shortage, even here in Van Buren County, we had a meat shortage at local grocery stores. It's really helped to drive people back to the farmer to 
what they call farm to table meat. Um, that's That's been a big thing I know in Van Buren County and surrounding counties. So I think once people get a, a taste of that, they're getting quality beef. They know where their beef comes from. Um, they also get a, a quality price. It's it's actually cheaper. It's a little more up front because you're buying you know in bulk, but uh, it definitely comes out uh, a lot more economical, feasible for a family yeah. in the long run. Awesome. Well, I know surrounding counties, uh, beef producers are excited to get this place up and running and have it as a avenue for them to get their meat processed. So could you tell the folks if they want to get in touch with you guys, the best way to do that and when you're expecting to open and all that good stuff? Um, well, my name is Barry Austin. My phone number is 423-779-4884. We'll be taking appointments uh, starting in July. Um, so anybody's free to call me. We'll have, uh, I'm, I'm waiting on the telephone company now to hook up uh, our internet service and phone here. We looked open about mid-June to start uh, some processing and then by July we'll definitely be uh, full speed ahead. Awesome. Well, this sounds like it's going to be a great asset for Van Buren County and we're excited to see where it goes in the years to come. Thank you very much. We had a great visit at a &H Custom Processing and their facility has changed a lot since we've been there to film. It's now open for business and serving the Van Buren County public and so they're bringing a fresh local product to their community which has been a really big topic lately. So people have really been enjoying buying fresh uh, local produce, buying straight or direct from a farmer. So Chris, can you tell us a little bit more about why that's maybe a trend in buying local? Yeah, so it seems like when COVID hit last March, that uh, consumers really got uh, shocked when they went to the grocery store and couldn't get everything they were used to buying. Uh, grocery stores were out of some of the meat that they were used to, to getting and having on hand and it really caused concern and so they started trying to buy more locally direct from the farmers and uh, that supply was there. It was available but we had a, a problem in the chain where we didn't have enough processing capability, enough capacity and our processors were booked two, three years out and farmers couldn't get dates to have their animals animals processed uh, and so folks like the Austins and the Howards that we talked with to, uh, in Van Buren County are really helping that and, and opening up that supply chain. So now Van Buren County has an even more convenient way to buy local. If you are interested in buying local in your community, there's some great ways to do that. Um, if you want to get in touch with your local extension office, we usually have a great list of farmers who are interested in selling local and can make some connections for you. Another great way to do that is our Pick Tennessee Products program run through the Tennessee Department of Ag. They have a great website and social media pages that can help connect you with local producers. Everyone involved is of course a Tennessee producer and so it is not only uh, different meat but flowers, vegetables, even restaurants who use Tennessee ingredients. So that's definitely a great way to make sure you're buying local and supporting our local farmers. Katie, one thing I think consumers will notice if they do buy local is the quality of the product they're getting is going to be significantly better maybe than what they're used to. Uh, no disrespect to the grocery store, but you and I know there's nothing better than going out to the garden and getting a fresh tomato. Well, fresh beef, fresh pork, fresh chicken, blackberries, blueberries, whatever you want to list is, is better if it's fresh. It's better if it's not shipped across the world. And uh, our local farmers are providing a product that I think once consumers try, they're going to be hooked and come back for. Absolutely. And like Mr. Austin said, sometimes it is a little bit more of an initial investment. But if you can make that initial investment and if you have space to uh, purchase maybe a half or a fourth of a cow at one time, since that is probably a little bit more than your regular grocery store run. But the convenience factor, too, of having all that fresh local meat on hand is a real benefit. When you get that craving for a steak, you're going to have a local fresh steak to throw on the grill and enjoy with family and friends. So there's a lot of benefits to buying local. Sure, so I would encourage you, get with your extension agent, check out that Pick Tennessee products page, find a farmer near, near you and, and go uh, enjoy their products that they work to provide for us. We're gonna catch back up with Chris Binkley and uh, go check out the forestry industry in Van Buren County.
Wright has mentioned earlier, the timber industry here in Van Buren County is extremely big. We have over 122,000 acres of forest here in Van Buren County, uh, which makes up about 70% of our land mass, which makes it a huge industry. So we're going to head on over here to the Piney Creek Sawmill, uh, where Jeff Pettit is the new owner of it, and he's going to walk us through the timber industry. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Pettit. I'm with Piney Creek Farms and Timber. We run a, uh, a farm and timber operation here in Van Buren County. Uh, we're, on the, we're on a personal farm right here. We're the, my son that's here with us, he'll be the fifth generation that's uh, here on the farm. Uh, it was owned by my, my grandmother's father who started it. Uh, it got cut up. Me and my father and my son, we basically put the farm back together. We do run a cow calf operation here, uh, but also we're in the uh, we're in the logging business, and we just recently purchased a uh, sawmill here in Van Buren County. We do start to finish. We cut the trees here on the farm, we replant them, and then when we harvest them, we take them to our mill and uh, turn them into lumber. We got into the farming business and the uh, uh, the land and timber business. My father. Um, was a brick mason. We done the brick mason stuff. Uh, I had a uh, had an accident. Had to get into something different. So we uh, had the chance to get into the logging business. We had a, a lot of land was sold back in '99 and 2000. We had a chance to go to work for them. And uh, I've always liked the land and timber business. So. We got, a, we got a chance to go into that. Uh, in 2001, we started our own logging operation, and uh, my, both my grandfathers was in the logging. My, uh, my grandfather on my mother's side had a, he, mule, he logged with the, uh, the mules. My grandfather on my father's side, he run the, uh, he worked for the Tennessee Division of Forestry running both uh, the Wolf Pen and the Piney Far Tower. It's, it's the, the timber industry, as far as the timber industry, it's, it's, a, it's a dying breed. Nobody wants to do it. It's very backbreaking, very hard, uh, and, and not many loggers are wanting to do it. Uh, my son, when he got out of school, he did come to work for me for a while, um, and he, just, he, he said, this is just not for me, and that's just, uh, uh, that's just a generational thing. They don't, they're not interested in it. It is very hard, very stressful. And um, uh, the, biggest, the biggest obstacle that we're running into now is uh, the workforce. It's just uh, whether it being in the logging or whether being at the sawmill, you just, you can't get uh, the workforce is our biggest obstacle that we're having to, to get through right now. I've wanted the sawmill ever since we ever since we've been in the logging business. I've wanted the sawmill. Uh, I've asked, and the sawmill that I bought was Hasten and Sun Lumber Company, which has been here since I think 1981 is when they originally come in and put the mill at a stationary position. Uh, I have asked them a couple of different times. Uh, we nearly bought a mill uh, about two years ago, and because of the workforce, we decided to back out of it. Uh, and, and, and I was very blessed that, that Mr. Haston did call back in early November of 2020 and said, hey, we're going to sell the meal if you're interested in it. Um, here it is. Uh, we went out, talked on a Thursday. Uh, we bought it on a Monday. And we've never looked back. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, I, I enjoy the logging. I do miss. I don't get to be in the log woods every day because I am at the meal. Uh, still learning that part of it, so I am there you know, six days a week doing stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, I've just always wanted to be one. I've, I've, I've never done the mill part of it. I've done, we run dozers, we do the logging, but I've never done the sawmill, so I've always wanted to do that part of it. We go uh, to Hermitage up in uh, Crossville. That gets turned into flooring. We also go up to uh, Crossville Hardwoods. They also put it into flooring. Uh, we take uh, the majority of our ties, uh, we take them down to Hollywood to uh, Stella Jones, which in turn goes down to uh, the sawmill, I mean through the uh, railroad companies and goes to the cross ties for the railroad companies. Uh, everything we do is either a tie and or flooring that goes to flooring companies. And I guess that's the biggest thing that we uh, that I hear is, hey, you're, you're cutting this timber, you're destroying the land, you're, you know, you're just, you're devastating this. And I hope from this video that we took earlier, you guys have seen where we are. We're cutting it. Yes, we are clear cutting it, but we are turning around and planting back nearly acre for acre of what we cut back into 
uh, back into it and or we are converting it over into farmland here on our personal on our personal stuff you know we're turning it over into farmland and, and for the cow calf operations uh, and, and I think that does get a bad rap that everybody says oh you're cutting you're cutting it and you know there's no trees left there's just as many trees planted every year as there is um, as they are taken, you know. And it's not the timber industry that's that's taking the land up, it's, it's other things that's taking it up. We had a great time at Piney Creek Lumber and I really enjoyed getting to learn a little bit more about forestry and lumber in Tennessee. That may not be the first thing you think about when you think about Tennessee agriculture, but actually forestry and wood products are vitally important to the economy of Tennessee, accounting for about 4% of economic activity and generating over 24 billion in output annually. So they are big business in Tennessee and vitally important to Tennessee agriculture. Families like the Pettits go to work every day to make sure that we have an adequate supply of wood products. If you'd like to get in touch with them, they do have a Facebook page at Piney Creek Lumber Company, or you can give them a call at 931-946-2839. What a great day in Van Buren County. Thanks so much to Chris Binkley and the extension crew for having us out and to Jeff Pettit Lumber and a &H Custom Processing for letting us tour their awesome facilities. Van Buren County may be small in size, but they have a big impact in agriculture in the Upper Cumberland and the extension team is doing a phenomenal job with extension programs up there. So really a fun day, a wet day here in Van Buren County, but we really enjoyed it. Hope you did as well. Look forward to having you with us for another episode of Cultivating Communities with UT Extension. Really, was I not supposed to talk? Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> Thank you. Like, y'all are making me work way harder than I thought. I really got into my extension agent because we used to have a really good one that I like named Chris Hicks. <laughs> <laughs> it's last time. But how does my hair look? How does Katie's hair look? Is it good? Okay. <laughs>